Oracle Apex is a developer tool that enables us to create working applications on a database in Oracle and to do that very quickly. So in this video series for rapid application development, we will be using Apex 424. If you want to work along with the videos, there are scripts available that will be run in the first few videos that create tables and populate the tables with data. This is the third video in which we're working with a master detail detail form. This is the report that precedes the form, so when I click on this I see the master record which is a student information associated with that particular student's attendances and that particular student's evaluations. I want to edit the report. I'm going to add the team ID or remove the team ID and display it as a list uh, as a team name. So what I want to do is change this so that it's displaying text based on an LOV and it doesn't need to save the state because this is not for data entry. Then I can jump to the list of values and pick the teams list, display no values yes, add a symbol or two, and apply changes and apply changes and when I run that then I see the the names of the teams but now that I'm here and I see that this is a classic report which is typically what you get with the master detail wizard I actually would like to have this interactive so I could do some filtering at the report level before I go down to the specific record in the master detail detail so I'm going to edit this page and I'm going to double click on the report in the page rendering section and you have an option here that I mentioned once in an earlier video we're going to migrate to an interactive report and in this you have to scroll down because if I try to create this right now I'll get, a me I'll get an error message and it says that a unique column must be specified Actually, you can go to row ID if you don't want to specify the field, but we have the primary key, the unique ID, which is student ID. So I'm going to add that information and click Migrate and then run this report. Now I have the ability to type in something and get a filter. I can remove that and type in another filter. I have the actions where I can do some uh, aggregating. But it looks like I've lost my team name so I'll go back and expand this. Oh yeah so what I see here this this uh, this report which is in italics now is disabled. That was the classic report. This is the new interactive report. So I actually want to work with this and I need to go to the team ID and I want to display, so I'm redoing this, I want it based on an LOV and scroll down and select my LOV which is teams, team list and then apply changes and run that and I get the team names back but I also have the interactive features which are very useful. I now want to go into the report and let's see, well um, this is for Adrian Cry so I'm going to go ahead and say I want to add or let, I want to come back out and actually and pick somebody that's got some data. So here we have Bob Smith and Bob Smith has been to one workshop. I want to add another workshop Notice that Bob Smith's ID is 5002 and I want to add another workshop. When I come here I have no student ID value and I'm not really sure why that's the case. Apex doesn't do this for us the way it should but I want to do a couple things here. When I add the workshop I need to be able to find that workshop by using a list of values but before I do that I need to figure out how to get the student ID to come in automatically which you would think would be passed from the master detail. So I want to go back and I need to edit this page. I need to edit this button because it's the action of this button 
that should be passing the 5002 to the next page where I add the workshop. So I'm going to add the, or go to edit, and I want to edit, not in the, uh, let's see, I'm collapsing the wrong thing, not in the student section, but in the student attendances. There's the create button. So I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to scroll down to action when button clicked. It redirects to a page in this application which is 82. And in that page, that target page, we want to set this page item P82 attendance student ID. We want to set that to the value here. Um, and this just isn't, this is, this is not the right name for the object. So I'm going to, and notice there is a period at the end here, but I'm going to go and I'm in the, currently I'm in page 81. So I can click or type that in and go click go to narrow my search because before that it was showing me all the page items in all the pages in the application. So what I want is that target page item to be equal to this right here, the P81 STD ID with that period. It's automatically put there. So that's what that should be. And I'm going to apply changes and run this. So now I'm going to click create and I should see the 5002 come across and it does. So the next thing I would do to make this more user friendly is I would come to the, I'm in page 82 and I would come to workshop ID, the foreign key, attendance workshop ID, and I would change that to a uh, select list and then come down to my list of values and I would pick the list of workshops. Oops, I don't have one so I will go back out of this and I will go to SQL workshop, I'll go to application and I'll go to shared components and I'll quickly create a list of values uh, based on workshops. So this will be workshop list and that's dynamic and I can use the wizard to help create this because it's going to be fairly simple. It'll be based on workshops. The display will be the workshop name. The return value will be workshop ID. Okay, now I come back to my application, run it, go to student information, go to that master detail, and then step into the form that allows me to add Let's see, I went to Barbara Cry. Let's stay with Bob Smith. So I'll do a create here. Then I want to edit page 82. So come back here, make that a select list, and then create that. Display null, yes. Null values, yes. Display null values and add some symbols. And then run that. And then now I have the list. Now I've lost my student number because I've been in that edit mode. But I'll back out and run, let's see, I didn't want to do that. I'll come in, go into Bob Smith, I'll create, and I'm going to put Bob Smith in communicating effectively and create that, and it comes back and it shows him being in that workshop. The one other thing I would do for this create is it's fairly easy to display additional information here because otherwise looking at this I don't know who 5002 is so we can add a little reminder here. I'm going to edit and I'm, I'm going to add a page. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to display I always like to show those primary keys and then I want to add an item so I'll add a page item And I want to add a text field. Let's see, hang on a second. Um, yeah, actually I want display only. I don't want a, a data entry field. And 
I'm going to say this is student name and the label student name is fine and this is based on a page item value in other words we're going to filter so that that 5002 filters and gives us just that student name so here I have to actually add the SQL which I have typed in before and I will just paste in here and then explain what it is. Okay. So what I have is select student user ID concatenate pipe pipe then single quote comma single quote then concatenate student first name concatenate single quote space to put a space between the names single quote concatenate student last name from the students table where student ID equals the foreign key and in this case it's going to be uh, page item uh, 82 and that should match up and we'll create this and we'll run it we don't have any information here so So I've got a problem. Uh, I think there's a property I forgot to set. Let me go in here again and source type and I don't remember seeing that. Um, so I'll go ahead and say single query, SQL query and let's see if that works for me. Okay, it looks like one of my field names is wrong, so we'll fix that. I typed out student last name and it's actually just student L name. Let's try this. So I don't see anything here, but if I go back to the record here and add or do a create, I'm now seeing 5002 and I'm seeing the user ID and the name of the student and then I could add uh, get organized and then I'm not seeing anything for attendance ID because that's the primary key for this record this new record hasn't been assigned a value yet so I'll go ahead and create that now we see that Bob Smith has been in three workshops if I look at them go in and look at these I see the this in this case I'm jumping to the workshop master detail and I'm gonna get back to where I was but if I want to create now when I come in I see Bob Smith's name so in the next video I'm going to wrap up this application I'm going to make a couple of pages public and determine what the URL is for my application